What I would like to talk to you about today is the importance of vitamin D in human health. Vitamin D deficiencies uh, are now considered a pandemic. There's, there's barely a patient that walks through our doors that doesn't have vitamin D deficiency. What's the consequences? What's the big deal? So what? They have vitamin D deficiency. Well, think about it. Vitamin D is related to virtually every function, can only be acquired really through two, two means, uh, some aspects of nutrition, uh, it's found in fish oil, uh, some aspects of supplementation, but primarily through the sun. I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. But think about what vitamin D deficiencies can result in. Uh, cognitively, you can look at things like schizophrenia, uh, depression, all correlated to vitamin D deficiencies. Uh, chronic pain, uh, both muscle weakness and muscle pain, uh, bone weakness and bone pain, osteoporosis, osteopenia, uh, cancers, um, endometrial cancer, prostate cancer, uh, breast cancer, all related to vitamin D deficiencies. Autoimmune disorders, upper respiratory infections, all related to vitamin D deficiencies. Vitamin D is absolutely critical to health. Now, in terms of wellness, and we talk about this all the time, isn't it a coincidence that nature has designed it so that we really can't be vitamin deficient? How so? Well, one, we can photosynthesize vitamin D, this critical vitamin, from the sun. Yet, over the last 10-15 years, we've become so sunphobic that we've actually now created an entire global pandemic of vitamin D deficiency. Our, our answer, our solution, supplementation. Here's the issue with vitamin D supplementation. Uh, much like the beta carotene studies that were done. Now, beta carotene, for those that don't know, is the plasma level or vitamin, um, I'll explain it like this. Beta carotene uh, levels in the blood are indicators of how many fruits and vegetables you're acquiring. In other words, plasma beta carotene is sort of our antioxidant marker of uh, antioxidant status in the blood. So, with people that were eating lower amounts of fruits and vegetables, they have lower rates of plasma and beta carotene. Makes sense, right? So what they thought was people that had cancer, like especially lung cancer, had, that had lower rates of plasma and beta carotene had lower survival rates. So they thought, hmm, patients with lower plasma beta carotene have lower survival rates. So why don't we just give them beta carotene? Sounds like a great idea. Had large studies, gave them beta carotene, what happened? Actually, they increased the mortality rate. Here's what that means. That means that patients died as a result of supplementing with beta carotene. Now, the body has a way of increasing antioxidants. It's called fruits and vegetables. They're abundant. There's literally hundreds upon hundreds of varieties. It should form the basis of our diet obviously. Again, a discussion for another time. Vitamin D, very similarly, however, has now been diagnosed or hyper, hypovitaminosis, vitamin D, uh, vitaminosis of vitamin D is considered a pandemic. So we have, a, as aforementioned, we have a pandemic of vitamin D deficiency. The solution, give them more vitamin D as a soluble form. Yet, We've been designed to create ample amounts of vitamin D. Basically, when the UV light, UV radiation from the sun, which we need, hits our skin, we have two layers of skin. We have sort of the epidermis, uh, which has five layers, and below that, the dermis. Within the epidermis, we have certain hormone precursors or cholesterol precursors that when the UV radiation hits it, the very specific wavelengths associated with the sun hits it, we then produce uh, vitamin D, provitamin pro D precursors. And again, as it hydroxylates both in the liver and in the kidney, we have the active metabolite. Supplementing, especially, you know, in studies are one thing, but having seen it in the clinic, uh, which you have to give basically mega doses of vitamin D to see an increase in uh, plasma uh, 25 hydroxy vitamin D, which is sort of the baseline marker for vitamin D. Or 
you can do what nature intended, which is get sun exposure. Sun exposure is what we're meant to do. Now, if you're interested in supplementing with a pharmaceutical grade vitamin D, they're available. Uh, they're available in your Health Score web store. Um, you can acquire them. But sunlight is critical. Sunlight is the first foundation within our paradigm. As the sun goes, so do we. The sun dies, we die, period. And we're surprised that people that have sun exposure are healthier, less apt for depression, stronger bones, less pain, stronger muscles, reduced risk for all cancers, reduced risk for even for type 1 diabetes, in, uh, reduced blood pressure, uh, reduced cardiovascular risk, all with sun exposure. The answer is really academic. We need sunlight for health, period. Sunlight is the first pillar. That's why we recommend, again, sun foods like raw foods, uh, foods that photosynthesize the sun. It's also why, why you need sun exposure.